So, number seven on our list here is neglecting tenants. This is um, kind of a true story here. Um, many, many years ago, I did this myself. Um, and I didn't do it on purpose. I did this because I didn't understand what I was doing. When I'm talking about neglecting tenants, I'm talking about not speaking to them until you need something or you want to communicate with them. Do you understand whenever that happens here, you don't really have a relationship with your tenants. Now, whether you know it or not, you as a landlord, you do have a relationship with your tenant. The better your relationship is, the easier it is for you to be a landlord. The easier it is going to be for you to get things done, for people to do stuff for you, or for people to even potentially repair stuff that you don't even have to pay for. I've got tenants in, in my units that will pay to have something fixed, or they know somebody that can come in and fix it or something like that. They'll pay for a new faucet or they'll pay for something else to come in and get it fixed without even bugging me. And that's just a part of their profile, a part of who they are, because we have a good relationship. They just don't want to, they just feel bad about bugging me. So, neglecting tenants, it's not necessarily just about not talking to them. Just keep in mind that it's an open communication. If you have a relationship, how do you feel about those friends that really only call when they want something? You know, are those people that you really want to talk to? I mean, think about that. If you get that call from a friend or from a relative, it's like, oh, great. Here comes Cousin Vinny. Cousin Vinny only calls me when he's in town and he wants to go, you know, wants some money or something like that. So now you're going to, boop, you're going to send Cousin Vinny a voicemail and you're not going to call him back. So not that your tenants would necessarily always do that to you, but you get my point about that one here. And that's just because you need to have a relationship with them. So even if they're great tenants, but they're great tenants, even just communicating them with, you know, with technology it doesn't even mean having a phone call with them, to be honest. Sending them an email, sending them a text message, even if it's just like once a month or something like that. Hey, I just want to say we appreciate you as a client, as a, as a resident. You know, please let us know if there's anything going on with your, your property. And again, thank you so much for being a resident. You know, just a text message. Somebody gets that from you. They know it's from you or from your office. They're checking in with you makes them feel better, makes them more opt to pick up the phone and be more responsive to you when you need it. Okay, so just looking at my notes real quick here in case I missed something. No, just check with them on a regular basis here, and that's all. You know, even if it's quarterly, guys, I mean, but just if you only contact a tenant once a year to renew their lease, how good of a relationship are you? Or even if you contact them a couple weeks before or even a month before their lease is up, you're not fooling anybody. The tenant knows that you're doing this just because the lease is going to be up and you're looking for them to stay. But if you communicate with them every single month, even if it's just a quick text message or an email or something like that, it doesn't have to be a personal email. It could be a mass email that you send out using a, an email service provider. I mean, you could have 50 units and you just broadcast 50 messages and say, you know, hey, it's, Ed, you know, it's Edward O'Daniel, blah, 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 and you just send them a message. It could be the same message you send to everybody. But at least you send a message out, and now they've got that in their inbox, and they know that you're communicating with them. So throughout the entire year, it's going to make that lease renewal so much easier. And potentially, if that lease renewal ever goes up, if you raise the rents, you're less likely to run across resistance if you already have a relationship because people know that costs go up. But if you only talk to them once a year and it's like, hey, your lease is up. Are you staying? Are you going? Because I'm knocking you right up 50 bucks if you're staying. Do you want to stay? you're probably not going to have a very good response rate if that's how you communicate with the tenant at the end of the year um, over there. So just a little bit of advice there. So uh, that was neglecting your tenants here. Uh, next we've got here is eight. Wow, these are not going so fast here.